Hello guys and well welcome to the first Java tutorial that I'm doing. Um and in this we're gonna be running a pixel rendering engine like the one in this which I'm working on at the moment. Um so well let's get started. <coughs> you just want to create a new Java project. It doesn't matter if you're using Eclipse or NetBeans, either one's fine, I just prefer Eclipse. Um so project name um pixel engine or whatever you want to call it and then hit finish and this will just give you a blank project I can close that so within bin I'm going to create a new um, class called game and this is going to be our main class so we'll just create that now instead of using a JFrame, which we will eventually add in, we'll be using Canvas. So public class game extends Canvas. And we're also going to want to implement runnable. Okay. So now just let it create its um, unimplemented methods. Okay, so now we're going to want to create our main method public static void main string arguments. Okay, now within this, we're going to want to create a new instance of this class game 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 equals new game. And game dot set preferred size. Spell that wrong. And this takes a dimension as a parameter, so new dimension width, comma height. And then just copy and paste that. And we'll set one to preferred side, one to maximum size. And one to minimum size. Now these are all uh, J canvas parameters. And they let us set new sizes for oh, spelt run there. Uh, set sizes for the game canvas. Um, now what we're going to want to do is implement our JFrame. So JFrame frame equals new JFrame. And we'll give that parameter of name. Um, the reason why these are appearing is I'm because I'm using Eclipse, all I have to do is press Control Alt and O and it'll organise my imports and bring in anything I need or get rid of anything I don't need. So let's start with some declarations. We're going to want a public static final int called height, and we'll call that uh, give that 480. No, we'll go for the normal uh, 120. Don't worry, this will start to make sense in a minute. This does seem quite small, but um, we'll be implementing a scale. So, um, so another. Public static final int for um, height, uh, width even, because we need a width parameter. Um, create another one and we'll call that scale. Okay, um, what else do we need? We need a public static final. Static final string string called name and call this whatever you want so I'll call it pixel engine now you just implement uh, the default serial version ID it's completely pointless it doesn't actually do much for us at the moment you only really want to be looking at that when you're getting to much much bigger projects okay so now we've got um, a basic setup. We've got a JFrame created. We've got a game, but the 
frame will not show anything. So now we want to set frame dot add components and we're going to want to give that game. So that's going to stick our game canvas into our J frame. Next we want to go frame dot set um, visible. No, not set visible yet. Set default close operation and we're going to say J frame dot exit on close. And that'll just kill the process once we close it. Ah, right, just a quick thing. Um, with the dimensions multiplied by scale. And scale should actually be 3. Let's just copy and paste that. Okay, so that's given us a 360 pixel wide um, game canvas which will resize itself with the um, resizing of the J-frame. Okay, back to the J-frame, uh, we're going to go frame dot add, uh, not add, dot pack. Now that will just build the J-frame. So now we're going to set frame dot set visible, boolean b, true because we want to be able to see our frame and that's minimal lowercase letters sorry about the typing, it's a new laptop I'm getting used to it frame dot set uh, what, what else did we need to set? set resizable now this is up to you, you can have true or false I'm going to have true because um, it's easier for testing and I think that's about it for our J-frame at least. So let's run it and see what happens. There we go. We have our J-frame. Okay, so now what that's going to do is give us our groundwork for the rest of our project. Um, what we're going to want to do now is start working on the actual pixels. So we'll call private um, buffered image image equals new buffered image width times scale height times scale buffered image type dot uh, it's gonna have to import it first and it's going to want another int um, so we're going to call it buffered image type dot uh, buffered image dot type int rgb okay and then now we're going to want to create our actual pixel array so private um, int pixels sorry int with uh, brackets pixels equals new uh, equal um, oh is it equal um, right so um, we don't need scale on here so we'll get rid of scale um, and this equals data buffer int as an parser image dot get raster dot get data buffer and then outside the brackets dot get data now you may find that you have to manually import data buffer int because it is quite a pain to get because it's an advanced part of java that they use um, so it's often manual import um, anyway we'll now create a random variable. So private. I don't know. We'll just call it random. Random. Random equals new. Random. Okay. So what have we done so far? Um, get away. We have created a new J frame, which appears, works well. It kills the um, operation when it's down there, dead. Um, 
we've set preferred size, we've got our game canvas running, um, and we've created a, an array here called pixels which stores all of the pixels from our variable image which is a buffered image that is recalled every time we render the game and it will recreate the image to be whatever is on the screen at the time and it will store all of those pixels into this array so that array is going to be quite large and it doesn't seem like it will run very quickly but surprisingly it does okay um, next we're going to want to call well, yeah, we'll start building the actual framework for the game. So game dot start, um, and we're going to want to create a boolean variable for that. Private boolean running equals false because we want to start it off false. Um, so public void start um, running equals true, and new thread this dot start that will start our run method uh, so as soon as we've called start so if there's any error in this our game won't start um, because this requires everything to work so if our game isn't going to appear it won't run um, but if it has appeared and there's no errors thrown by that we'll have game dot start called that will then set the boolean running to true which we'll use in our um, run method and then it will start the run method with that now what runs going to take is while running um, because it's a variable uh, boolean you don't have to put equals true um, if you just put while running it will always um, it will only look for true if you wanted it to be false you could just say while well, exclamation mark running Anyway, um, while running, we're going to want to tick, and we're going to want to render. So now we'll create public void stop, because it's useful to have that, and that's just going to be running equals false. Um, now we're going to want public void render. This render method won't take any parameters, and now we're going to start um, working with the pixels so just get rid of the tick error so public void tick okay so I'll run the method what we're going to do in here is um, create a buffer strategy buffer strategy is if you're ever playing a game and it's animated you don't see the frame that it is currently showing you'll see two or three frames beforehand because it will preload them so it it can just show them immediately. So if you think about a flash game, when it's got the preloader coming up, that's buffering all the data. When you're on a YouTube video, it's just buffering through. And we're going to do that with our um, rendering engine, and that's going to um, have to go. It's going to take a buffer strategy and load the three frames in three dimensions that we're going to need to render. So we'll start creating that now with buffer strategy bs equals get buffer strategy and that does have to be capitalized strategy oh grab the import and that's actually methods sorry okay so that's going to have grabbed the buff strategy for the current file okay so now we're going to make sure that actually exists because as soon as we're running it it won't actually exist we have to create it so if bs equals null we're going to so if it doesn't exist we're going to want to create it so create buffer strategy and we're going to want to give it a variable of three because we're going to want to use three dimensions even though this will be a 2d rendering engine we'll be using three dimensions for different levels or some yeah different levels but we'll get onto that create buffer strategy and return. In fact, just above return, um, that will just exit this um, run through and then I'll just restart when run is called again. Um, we're going to want to request focus. Now that will just um, grab the cursor's focus. Um, yeah, okay. 
So now we're going to want to start using our buffer strategy. So in render we're going to want to say uh, graphics g equals bs dot get draw graphics rather than draw graphics. What they'll do is they'll set our graphics variable. So instead of using the built-in paint, uh, so paint graphics g, we'll be calling. Um, we will ask it to get the graphics that we'll be using from our buffer strategy. So that'll give us three-dimensional graphics which we will get onto. Okay, so now we're going to say g dot draw image. We're going to want to call our original image. Um we want to have it zero zero um what was this to get the right draw image one up. This massive argument wants for movement draw image Draw image, and you're just going to want int width height image observer. So this one, you're not going to want all of those um, variables. So im image zero zero get width, which will return the width of our current panel. So get width, get height. and we're going to call null here so we don't want an image observer um, okay now um, g dot dis dispose bs dot show so we're going to be disposing our draw graphics because we don't want them to return an error saying they already exist so we'll draw it get rid of them so everything else can run without having them in the background, um, and we can we'll then show our buff strategy, so that will show the actual image. Now in our run, in fact, we'll stick it in the tick, so we we'll use everything. Um, so we're going to use our random variable. So for int i equals zero, i is less than pixels dot length i plus plus. Pixels um, in position i equals random dot next int. So we're going to want to assign the pixels value, uh, the value in pixels at i, to a random number. And what that will do is will give us this noise. Now each of these little blocks is going to be three by three because of our scale. So if we wanted to make it slightly larger, we could give it a scale of 30 and they're going to be massive pixels and we'll just kill that drop it, drop it back down to 3 and that is running ridiculously quickly you won't be able to see it yet because you don't have an FPS counter but that's running at about eight or 9,000 FPS which isn't bad considering it's running through every pixel that it's trying to render now just one final thing that I'd like to show you is um, a bit shift. Now what that does is will allow us to force it to show different colours. So if we just do bit shift 4 to the left and run that you won't notice the difference but if we do 16 it should be red. And that's, we will be using that later on for a get colour method but you can just play around with them and that's quite a lot of fun to do but for now that is it next time we will get further well we'll add an fps counter into our tick and we will start actually making this into some sort of a game well thanks for watching and see you next time